Hello, and welcome to Zero Touch Apple TV deployments with Exhibit. My name is Quentin Harriff, and I work for the University of Nebraska Information Technology Services as an endpoint systems engineer. When I'm not working with the day-to-day -day management of Apple endpoints within our institution, I spend my time coming up with creative solutions and workflows for endpoint deployments. Today, I'm gonna to show you one of those solutions, an application for Apple TV deployments called Exhibit. This app was born from a frustrating deployment experience, as well as a personal interest of mine to become more familiar with app development within the Apple ecosystem. From there, I'll give you all the information you need to bring this tool to your own environment and start ex using Exhibit. So first, I wanna go over um, what, uh, what is Exhibit and the history behind it and uh, why I decided to create the app. I'll touch on the features within Exhibit and the requirements to get started. After that, I'll go into the configuration steps, uh, the CSV file playlist required to use Exhibit, the managed app configuration you'll put into Jamf, and the zero touch setup process and the components within Jamf that you'll need to get started with that. Next, I'll do a demo with a video of Exhibit going through automated device enrollment uh, with that zero touch setup experience. And then finally, I'll give you resources that you can point to to uh, get started with Exhibit and go from there. So first I wanna talk about why Exhibit and the history behind it. So, you know, with the number of people owning Apple devices in our university, installing Apple TVs within those study spaces and classrooms on our campus became a necessity to allow individuals to airplay to displays within classrooms, conference rooms, and study spaces. The first iteration of this deployment was an Apple TV locked into conference room display mode. And in order to provide a more personalized experience in those areas, we would also set custom images on each device to play as a screensaver behind that AirPlay box. This worked well for a while, but over time it became clear that this solution needed some work. As one, there were too many manual setup steps involved. Two, signing into every Apple TV with the same iCloud account was not the most secure nor enterprise friendly experience. And three, we could not easily scale that process to other areas that wanted to display their own image content as a screensaver on those Apple TVs. So here's a little bit of what our old process looked like. We would set several settings that could not be set with MDM, um, including the sleep settings. We would go in to iCloud Photo, sign in with a generic Apple ID account and turn on that iCloud Photo Library, and then set a shared album as our, uh, our screensaver for conference room display mode. From there, we would have a few additional screensaver steps to put in, and it just was really a cumbersome process that we needed to find a better solution uh, that was a, that you know met a few requirements and, and was quicker um, and took less support hours from my team. So that's where Exhibit comes in. Uh, I looked at the process we were working with and thought this would all be much easier with an app but I could not find a free solution that gave us what we needed. So I decided to put my limited programming knowledge to the test and started playing with Xcode. Exhibit is the end result of that. So what is Exhibit? This is an Apple TV app designed to give you that conference room mode experience while also adding a higher level of customization. Exhibit can also enable you to provide a simple digital signage experience when AirPlay is not being used on that Apple TV. Here's an overview of some of the main features of Exhibit. We have central content control for many or few devices, as many as you need, with that CSV playlist. Image start and end dates to decide when you want to start showing an image and when you want to stop showing that image. AirPlay box customization to control the style and behavior of that box. And then future support for video playback. It's something I'm working on in my free time and I hope to have more with that soon. And of course, the zero touch setup process is a huge advantage to using this app. 
So here's an example of what exhibit actually looks like. It's very similar to the conference room display mode. Um, you'll see images that you define in that CSV file rotate in the back of the screen. And then that AirPlay box is controllable uh, where you want it and it will just flow across the screen with some custom content within the box depending on how you set it. Uh, it'll also show the name of the Apple TV like it does in conference room display mode. There are many other configuration items and I'll get into those as well. Some requirements before you get started with Exhibit. So uh, you need to be able to deploy VPP apps to Apple TVs using managed app config. You can do that with Jamf. Uh, you'll need Apple TV 4 or 4Ks eligible for Apple School or Business Manager. Uh, so you can take advantage of that automated de device enrollment workflow. And of course, you'll need tvOS 12 or newer uh, to take advantage of VPP apps uh, from uh, or on tvOS. Uh, and in, that includes Jamf 10.7 or later when they added the ability to deploy VPP apps to tvOS. So to jump into the configuration items, the first thing you'll want to start with is that CSV playlist. On that CSV playlist, it pulls data from a publicly hosted CSV file. Uh, that CSV file must be on a server with a valid SSL certificate. So that means HTTPS URLs are required. And of course, read the documentation. There's tons of information on on how to construct that CSV playlist along with some great examples that you can use to get started. To go through what that CSV playlist looks like, uh, there are seven columns here uh, that you'll want. Uh, the first column is just kind of a reference uh, value to tell what the, the image you're displaying is. Uh, you can put whatever you want there. Um, you know, in this example, image of campus, uh, just tells me when I go back to, to change out content, what I'll be uh, removing and adding, and it gives a better, easier reference than just copying that URL and looking at the image. The URL, the location of the image or video file, uh, when video support is available, um, that needs to be, of course, an HTTPS URL, um, ending in .jpg or .png. The duration of the image, so how long do you want that to display on the screen? I usually use 10 seconds, but that can be really useful if you have content with lots of uh, text or um, lots of things for people to read that you want to display a little bit longer, or maybe you want something to display for a shorter amount of time. The update interval is currently unused. That is included from another project that we also use the CSV file for. Uh, so that one can be ignored. Just use the standard uh, default value there. The start on date is the time and date or the date and time that you'll begin seeing that image on the screen. Um, and of course, the end by date is the end date of which you'll stop seeing that on the screen as well. Um, that can be useful if you have time sensitive content. Maybe there's an event in a public space and you want to show it with some uh, kind of digital signage on those screens. Uh, you can, you know, in advance set the start and end date for that, and that can be really useful. And then the cache value is currently unused as well. Images will cache uh, as long as the Apple TV stays powered on. The next configuration item is managed app configuration. So this is an important part to tell the app from Jamf how to display certain items, but the only really required item is that data URL value, edu.nebraska.imageviewer.data URL is displayed there. That is required for the app to function because that is the value that tells what the CSV, where the CSV file is and where to pull it from. So once it has that value, it can start displaying images uh, with your default settings. But if you want to dive further into that configuration, all those values are supplied at the exhibit.readthedocs.io site. Here's an example of what that managed app configuration would look like. Uh, it's simply just a, 
a dictionary full of keys and strings uh, and, and also some Boolean values that will allow you to set specific parameters. But like I said, the only one really required to get started off the ground is that data URL value. Now the next configuration item, I'm gonna go through that zero touch setup process. With this process, we'll need a pre-stage enrollment two smart groups, one for pre-stage enrolled devices and another for pre-stage enrolled devices that have exhibit installed, a configuration profile uh, for single app mode for exhibit, and a temporary configuration profile to display conference room display mode for just a little bit. And I'll show you why here in a, in, in a few slides. And finally, mobile device, the mobile device app, the exhibit record, um, that's exhibit with managed app configuration. And of course, you'll want to uh, get licenses of exhibit. It's a free app uh, from Apple School or Business Manager uh, before creating that device app record. So that first one, that pre-stage enrollment, the pre-stage obviously is the uh, place that tells Jamf what device, where your device is gonna go, what configuration it's gonna go through. So you'll wanna set up a custom pre-stage for uh, each deployment that you do. Uh, everything is pretty standard through that pre-stage. The one thing that you'll want to make sure you check is the auto advance through setup assistant value. Uh, and then along with that, the language and region settings uh, in there as well. Uh, that's going to allow us to plug in the Apple TV uh, to ethernet on first boot and automatically progress through setup assistant without using your remote, which is great. The two smart groups you'll need for that zero touch setup. The first one, like I mentioned, is the pre-stage enrolled devices. This is going to be a smart group with all devices that have come through this pre-stage that you've created for your Apple TVs when installing Exhibit. The criteria for that is going to be enrollment method, pre-stage, operator is, and then the value is going to be the name of the pre-stage that you created. The second smart group you'll want is pre-stage enrolled devices with Exhibit. That's going to be very similar, but instead it's going to start with the app name has exhibit and the criteria enrollment method pre-stage is, and then the name of your pre-stage. That's going to give us all the devices that have gone through that pre-stage and have had the exhibit app installed. And I'll show you why here in just a second. The next piece you'll want is the mobile device app record. Of course, you'll wanna get those licenses from Apple School or Business Manager first, so they'll deploy properly. Uh, but you'll want to set the distribution method for that to install automatically. I like to automatically force updates, so I'm always making sure to push out the latest version of the app. And then I'll want to assign volume content. Uh, those are those licenses from ASM or ABM uh, that you uh, already would have gotten. And then you're going to scope that device, uh, mobile device app to the pre-stage enrolled devices. So any device that comes through that pre-stage. And of course, you'll add your app configuration under the app configuration preferences box. Uh, and like I mentioned, you just need that CSV URL to get started in there. So here I wanna go into a little bit of why we have two separate uh, configuration profiles and smart groups. So in Jamf's documentation, they mention attempting to lock Apple TV devices to an in-house or third-party app that does not yet exist on the device will cause an error. To avoid this issue, ensure the app is installed on scope devices before configuring single app mode. Now this is an issue I've run into the past where uh, it just doesn't behave properly when we're trying to scope the app directly to the devices enrolled through the pre-stage. You, you end up hanging on uh, a white screen for a really long time, it's much better to only scope that profile to devices that already have the exhibit app. So for that, the configuration profile we're going to do first is the single app mode configuration profile. We're gonna lock that uh, to a specific bundle identifier. That bundle ID for exhibit is going to be edu.nebraska.imageviewer. We're also going to check the box to disable auto lock that's going to keep our Apple TV from sleeping um, in the event that the screen goes to sleep or something. 
And then we're going to scope that to pre-stage enrolled devices with exhibit so that this configuration profile comes down as soon as exhibit is installed on the device and it has reported its app inventory back to your Jamf Pro instance. In addition to that, we're going to do a temporary conference room display mode profile. The reason we're going to do a temporary one here is to kind of bridge the gap between the time it takes to enroll the device into Jamf and install the app. So we have something to display there and people aren't just hanging and, and wondering what's happening. I like to use a conference room display mode profile um, or payload. Um, for the on-screen message for that, I just put, please wait while this Apple TV is configured automatically. And then to set the scope for that, I target pre-stage enrolled devices and exclude pre-stage enrolled devices with exhibit. That way we're pu pushing this profile down as soon as the Apple TV is enrolled and pulling it back off when the pre-stage enrolled devices with exhibit, um, when that device comes in and has the app and reports it back to Jamf, it gets pulled back on off while the other profile gets put on and we get that seamless push over into exhibit. And then finally, one more thing I wanted to add is the AirPlay security payload. This is totally optional, um, but it's something that I like to include as we're able to set that security uh, setting to passcode. And that will prevent users from using AirPlay without re-entering that passcode that's shown on screen. Sometimes you'll be able to connect with your device and then reconnect without entering a passcode. And that's in a public space, not a setting that we necessarily want to to keep. So we're wanting to push out that profile typically and other AirPlay security settings as applicable in your institution. So now I want to give you a quick uh, demo video of what you might expect with an exhibit deployment on Apple TV. So this is an Apple TV that is booting up for the first time. Of course, it gives you the pair your remote screen, but in this situation, we have that ethernet cable connected and we've done the auto advance through setup assistant. So after just a few moments, this should automatically start walking through setup assistant and give us the settings that we are expecting. So we'll just give it one moment. Any second now. And we'll see the, auto, the, the Apple TV is checked in with Apple and is automatically configuring itself. Um, it's going to pull the, the profiles that it needs, um, including that uh, conference room display mode profile. And we'll see that come up here in just a moment. We'll very temporarily see this AirPlay box float across the screen. And it's just a, this is just the conference room display mode. This is what's telling us, please wait while this Apple TV is configured. But in the background, the exhibit app is installing. And once that app has submitted, or once the Apple TV has submitted its inventory back to Jamf, it's going to automatically switch those profiles. And we're gonna start seeing the images that we defined in our CSV file rotate through the background of the Apple TV. We'll also see that AirPlay box randomly float around the screen. And within there, uh, if we've set custom settings, we'll see um, uh, you know, custom text or uh, a custom uh, placement, or you have the option to just entirely turn off that AirPlay box. And of course, we're always looking to uh, expand that. I'm always looking for ideas on on how to make this more customizable um, and fit this kind of similar experience. So um, that's kind of all. That's kind of all there is for uh, Exhibit. It's a very straightforward and clean app. Finally, I want to point towards the documentation website as I mentioned earlier. Uh, that's at exhibit.readthedocs.io. On this site, you'll see everything that I've shown here today, um, including some example uh, CSV and managed app configs that you can just plug in and start using, and some configuration profiles you can download and upload to your Jamf Pro instance and just get started right away with it. Um, if you need support at all, if you need help uh, later on, there is a Mac admin Slack channel called Exhibit. Um, and that's also linked to on the site 
as well as some other support options if you want to reach out and ask questions or have a bug or anything like that. I'm always willing to uh, open conversation and dialogue there as often as I can, uh, as often as I can for a free app. So um, if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out. And that's all I have for you today. Thank you for listening and uh, feel free to give us feedback by completing the survey using the widget below. Thank you.